So I've got a project that's been staring me in the face and I'm tired of looking at it on my table. Well, it was time to upgrade the old beast. And what is this? Well, it's my backup per se dev unraid server. And it was time to move on to something more. And this is a decent little box that did serve me well as my first thing into unraid and actually the first part of when I started running home assistant. And you may be saying, well, are you going to something smaller or going to something bigger and better? Well, that's where things get to where, you know, this is just a dev, you know, box. And no, I'm not going to something smaller. I would love to just go to something small, like the little nut style. Like I haven't done a full review thing on this yet. This is a little i5 box and there's another little Geekum i7 box. But the problem is with these, there's no space for additional hard drives. And yeah, I guess you could do some smaller, but for the average person, you're gonna want some spinner hard drives and there's just simply no room. And doing USB from a data standpoint just plain sucks, stick to SATA. What about something like this? Well, no, this is gonna be my upgrade little box for Blue Iris. It only has space for, I think, one or two hard drives. Well, this box, yeah, and you may laugh, I did have two big fans that sat on the side of here, and then I did put this plate just to continue. The cooling kind of sucked because I had a bunch of hard drives stacked in here, more than it was really designed to have. And there's spots for four hard drives. There's two here and two here, and then I had an SSD. And by the magic of television, I moved them to another box already. And I haven't fired it up yet. And I did want to just transition. That's the cool thing with Unraid is that you can just take the hard drives out. Whatever it may be. You've got four, five, six, whatever for all your media stuff. And then you've got your little USB stick. And you pull them out. Pull them out of the one box, put that one to the side, and and I did want to mention, if I haven't already, because I just kind of do things off the cuff, I'll probably send this to somebody just off of Discord. So if you haven't already joined the Discord, come hang out with us. we got some cool places and channels and people out there, a whole melting pot of people, and I do some giveaways at time on there as well. If you've been around the channel, you've seen this guy. Nope. Well, this was given to me by a family member. I think they did some gaming on it or whatever. And I just had to throw some memory and power supply in it. And it's a great little i7-7700, I believe. Perfect little box for throwing in a bunch of hard drives and got a decent case for, you know, some fans in the front or whatever. Now, I may have to find some additional caddies, but I've thrown my three hard drives in here and the SSD down the bottom. Yeah, I didn't make you sit there and watch even though I did record that footage of me going through and putting the hard drives, but yeah, that's not gonna, that's boring to watch that crap. You just take the little USB and that's where the operating system lives for Unraid. And I've even changed from that Xeon box I just put down over to an AMD box didn't have to reload things. That's pretty awesome that you can just drag stuff over and it boots up. The only thing I've seen some people have had to boot into GUI mode where they've had to change some stuff with some network interfaces and if they've had different IP addresses or whatever, then you could boot into GUI mode or you can do the command line just to fix some things you may have had, say with some IP addresses or just with the way you had configured if you had multiple Ethernet adapters. But I didn't have that. I just had one Ethernet adapter identified on there and you should just be able to boot up and go. Now, one thing I did want to, because this would just be a short ass video, is you just move hard drives and plug it in, turn it on and go, right? I could probably do it in one of those little one minute short thing, but I did want to show a few things of that are potentially scary. And yeah, that's when a hard drive fails on Unraid. And I do have a six terabyte drive that is failing 
and that's my parity drive and I wanted to show how I'm going to replace that and of course this isn't data that it's really it's just backup data so it's kind of like I'm fixing the backup data of things and then I wanted to add some other hard drives in there and so I'll show might be a part two on that of changing up this array on Unraid because that's scary doing it to your own thing. So we'll do it to mine. It's no big deal. If we screw it up, we screw it up. So let's all learn together and jump in and fire this thing up on this new i7 processor. I wanted to check out one thing just to see the GUI mode. I've never really checked it out. We got a prompt to log in. And I believe you can have the mouse. I've only seen pictures of this. And yep, so you can actually navigate around. You could go through and pick, you know, whatever type of, you know, say you wanted your settings. You could go through and change all your adapters exactly what you're used to as, you know, say on the actual web GUI. But this is all going to be local to the machine to fix a network interface issue in case you had some sort of driver issue or whatever, or you just plain screwed up the Ethernet settings and you kind of locked yourself out of the system. So pretty cool. I like being able to see that. I haven't really booted into it before, just never really had the opportunity to do so. So that's a pretty cool feature. Let's jump into actually the web interface since we can run this headless now. And you can see I do have all of my drives do appear, which is good. And then I've got some other common errors. I'll go dig through that later. But the awesome part about it, it just boots up. It's that freaking simple. What The way Unraid works, if you're curious how it does all this, I didn't put the hard drives in any particular order. So it goes off, off of the identification and it knows based on, hey, this is the order they had it in before, so we're just going to go ahead and put it that same way. So you can just change SATA ports all day long. Of course, we even change the whole damn computer. And it just works. And you can see that now, I've totally forgot what, yeah, this is a Core i7-7700K processor. And get a little smaller on memory. I have 16 gig of RAM. I don't think I need to go 32 on this guy because I'm not doing a whole lot with it like I'm doing with my other box. And yeah, you can see how here's that error. I do have that thumbs down right here for my smart error on that one parity drive. So the next thing we're gonna do, I wanna pull this parity drive and then we're going to let it rebuild the parity. I do have another six terabyte. Now the way, if you're curious on how some of this does work, is your parity drive always needs to be a bigger drive than your data drives. And so luckily here, I've only got a two terabyte and a 1.5 right now. Of course, I have a lot of slack space, wasted space with parity, but your parity needs to be the biggest one and or the same size as your data. You can't have a smaller parity than your data drive. So I'll zoom in the screen here a little bit for especially for the mobile users. And you can see here this is once it starts up, once you've changed the drive and like I say, just change things in one step at a time. Don't try to change too many things at one time. That's why I wanted to start up this system with the same exact configuration. That way I knew if something was wrong, it was down to something with the actual system and most likely not the hard drives. So now that we've found out that the system worked great, we changed the hard drive because I need to change out the parity drive. And you can see now the auto start is showing disabled and it pops up to this. It will not start up anything else because it's asking for what to do because you changed the hard drives. So you can see it's saying this drive is missing. That was my bad drive. And you can see if I hit the little drop down, it's like, hey, there's another drive there that you don't have anything going to. So let's go ahead and we'll assign it as the parity. That's gonna give you this warning. I do have to scroll over because of the zoom, but you can see it's just saying, hey, that whatever you have on there, it's gonna overwrite everything. But hey, 
I want to check out this drive anyway. That's a good way to check every single sector is doing a new parity on it, right? Now, a new drive, you're just adding it to, which will get down to the further steps of adding some additional drives. We'll go over a couple steps there, but this is just changing out the parity. Now, the keen eyes, you can say, well, parity two. Well, that's awesome. If you want to add another drive, you could add a second parity right here as well that gives you dub, kind of double. If you lose two hard drives at one time, you're still golden and you can fix both of those because you have two parity drives. But do remember your parity drives always have to be the same size as the largest or the largest hard drives in your array of drives. You'll have the option here that you do have to hit start. Now, sometimes when you're, it will give you an option that you have to like check another box. Just follow through, just keep looking at the bottom. It's usually pretty good at telling you what's wrong. Now, this particular one, since we changed out the parity, boom, you can see parity sync 0.0%. .0 if you scroll down to the bottom, you can also see that it's showing it's going to take about 13 hours and you'll see the different notifications. If you have notifications enabled to like Discord or your phones or whatever, the different ones, you'll get these same notifications. Now, I did want to check. I'm not getting any smart errors from my parity drive, but if it does have an issue with the sector, I will definitely know it as going to the parity because the parity is going to write to the entire six terabytes, even though my largest drive, I believe right now is just a two terabyte drive. Yes. So we'll let this run through. Of course, if you want to sit around and watch for the th 12, 13 hours, no, I'm not putting out a crazy long video like that. No, mine are pretty long to begin with, but we'll let this one run through and then we'll put this machine back to work on doing our backups and then we'll do some other potentially other videos with it. If there's some other stuff you'd like to see, you know, shoot the comment down below. So, yep, I do appreciate you watching and this little different one Probably will go through seeing some more of this box as well, because like I say, this is going to be my backup media server and I want to put it in a different location and do a VPN connection to it to have, you know, secure backups of offsite data that really don't cost me anything. And I'm the one that stays in control of it, not someone else. So there's some other solutions you're doing out there, something cool with servers, Unraid or whatever, definitely share it down below. You can come join our Discord as well. There's lots of cool other geeks, including myself out there doing some cool and awesome things. A big melting pot of people. So you, might, you can always find help for something. So thanks to all the Patreon members and all the YouTube members. Definitely couldn't do it without you. It definitely helps bring new projects and products to the channel all the time. And you know the drill. Smash all them buttons down below and y'all take care. Well, then it's your question. What you doing, Owen? Dragging us? Yep. You figured it out? Yeah. I'm so high. You're so high? <laughs> I'm so tall. What you been doing to get so high? Because the rock. Oh, the rock? No, I'm getting lower. You should stay off the rocks, yeah. Owen. Why? Huh? Why? Because it gets you high. Oh, it's better that way? Yeah. Oh. Does your mama get high? We're all in a big group. Hey, does your mama get high? Um, 
No. Oh, okay. Because I'm taller. Oh. oh. Spin. Spin. I'm making this house some fun. Making this house some fun.